G'day mate, welcome to three uh, Friday Facts 314 and a half. Um, because we did the Friday Facts on Friday Australian time. Um, myself and Mojo. Hey Mojo. Hello, also. Don't um, forget I'm here. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't forgot, maybe. Um, we did the Friday Facts on Friday our time, like, an hour after it released, I think. Yeah, that are bounce a bit over, maybe. Yeah, well, like, within the first couple of hours of coming out. and it wasn't we, even 8 o'clock. No, it was... Oh, I actually, I, 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 I should go look at the video to know what time it was, but I'm not going to. It was early. And then the whole second half of the Friday Facts got published by Kvorax, which was all about World of Warcraft that wasn't there when we first did it. So we decided to come back for a second round, I guess. Um, so yeah, this was interesting, I guess. Um... It, it starts off with Kvorax, um, well, commenting about World of Warcraft. He says it's got some good ideas. And he's spent a considerable... Don't say. <laughs> well... Well, the game has a few good ideas in it. I think uh, it's sustained popularity, might have something to do with it. Yeah, and, and <laughs> the fact that like you've managed to charge people to buy a game and then charge them every month to play the game is impressive yeah. by my standards. Um, so, yeah. He spent a lot of time playing World of Warcraft Classic the past few weeks, and um, what he finds interesting is many people, including himself, find the old version of the game better than the modern one. And he's got a couple of reasons he can see for that. Um, uh, and he's he's worried. Well, and he wants to learn some mistakes from other games, which which I guess is a smart way of doing like your development. You can see mistakes that have been made in other games um, and other parts of life and then hopefully not put them into your creation. Um, you'd hope you'd correctly recognise the mistakes so you don't implement them too. Yeah, that's. I think that's probably the hardest part. Um, and yeah, he doesn't want to spend the next 10 years working on better versions of Factorio just to find out the old ones are better for some reason, which is exactly what's happened with WoW according to all the people on my Discord that are now playing World of Warcraft Classic. Um, they don't like the modern version. They like the old version, which I sort of understand and I sort of don't. I never played WoW and you didn't play WoW either. Nope. Um, but I know I've got a deep history in Diablo and I believe you do too. So Not really, but no. I played a little bit. Okay, so I, I can sort of draw on my Diablo, um, I guess, I don't know, history, whatever. Um, so the topic that connects it all is making things more convenient isn't always making things better. And he gives an example of this, like making an elevator making an elevator saves time and effort, but you feel bad for moving less in the long run, which is definitely I can something I can see, at least around where I live, because anything more than three well, anything more than two or three stories here in, in the city I live in has an elevator, like guaranteed. Um a lot of it's then good. again, the city where you live, people... Is that the kind of place where people drive to the mailbox? No, 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 no. It's not like three kilometres to the mailbox, but people will drive to the corner store because you can, you know? It's it's that sort of... Well, it's that sort of life where, you know, more than 100 metres, I can't be bothered. But I know there are many places around the world where people don't have cars and you rely on public transport. Therefore, you walk everywhere. Therefore... People don't tend to get overweight and stuff because they have to move. They don't have a, have a choice. Um, I know I used to live in a three-story house, well, three stories up, and there was no elevator, and I had to walk up and down all the time, and it made me fit, at least. Um, yeah, it, it, surprised, it takes a surprising amount of energy to go upstairs, up, or even up three floors. It does, and then after you go shopping once a week and you buy a week's worth of groceries and they have to go up and then... Therefore, they make trash every week that then has to go down. It adds up. It really, really does add up. Um, so we've got this lovely video here, which uh, I think it's really short. 42 seconds. I never thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then. No. And it's somebody asking and, and by the, way, the WoW you don't dev want team. To, that, to do that either. Yeah, it's somebody asking the WoW dev team, you know, can you, like, when you roll out a new expansion, can you give us a set of servers that stay on the old expansion so people don't have to update? And, and the dev's answer is basically no. We don't want, we fix bugs along the way, so you don't want that. But there's also the convenience that Covrex covers in a second, right, about 
in World of Warcraft, at least the original, you had massive raids with 60 plus players. And you'd have to have 60 players organized to meet up on a Friday night at a set time and all 60 people show up to do some of these raids. Otherwise, you'd have to spam these looking for group channels and ask guilds or longtime uh, buddies to come help you out to finish one of these raid, you know, raid, I don't know, bosses? Bosses? Yeah. It's the sort of thing you always hear about where people say they've got to go do this WoW raid and, you know, it's this big group of people and, and that's the kind of thing where the Leroy Jenkins come from. It, it is, it is, it is. It, Leroy Jenkins is a WoW meme. Yep. Yes. Um, Back before they were called memes. Uh, oh, were they? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's probably that old. Memes, um, came, well, memes is a shorthand for demotivational. Oh, is it? There you go. I learnt something. Comment below if you learnt something today. Mojo taught you, taught you something. Um, but yeah, in modern WoW, they made a dungeon fight that allows you to select a role and automatically teleport you to a dungeon with the appropriate people. Which, I've never had... So I, I've never done 60-man raids. I've never done 30-man raids. I've never done any multiplayer experience where I needed to have a large amount of people all organised at once. But I, did, I have played Diablo 3, where literally... I just join a multiplayer game. I don't care who's there. You know, sometimes you end up with a good group of people and you might end up playing for three hours or you might end up with a shit group and you just quit the group and join another group and hope for a better better role of random people. Um, just just quit and re-roll. Pretty much. Um, and that's pretty much what it covers. Like, the harder it is to get a group assembled, that means people are more likely to try and overcome the problems rather than just quitting and re-rolling with somebody else, which is what I do in Diablo. Because like it's it's me and three other people. Um, if, if they're bad, I'm only one quarter of the team and they're three quarters of the team. You know, if I re-roll, chances are I'm going to get a better three quarters to re-roll with, but that's not all the case. I have spent many hours getting frustrated because I keep re-rolling and getting bad teammates over and over and over. Um, or because the, the the server region is so small, you keep getting the same teammates. No, I'm I, I, I like Diablo doesn't have a Australian server, so I'm always re-rolling with US. Region. Um, yeah, we don't get our own region, so I'm re-rolling with US. But it does mean that I'm pulling from US teammates that given the time that we play compared to US time zones, it's a stupid hour in US time. So the player Probably pool getting is... getting stoners. Yeah, the player pool is very, very small. And they a lot of times people that need to be carried, at least when I was playing. Um, so yeah, because you have... Because you had so much trouble getting 60 players together, you'd normally go with a non-optimal setup um, because it just... It took so much time and effort to get that 60 players together. Um... And when you're not teleported to the dungeon, you actually had to travel there. Um, it kept the immersion of the game, whereas now it's a click and magically you appear. Um, and yeah, I sort of, I don't know, Diablo doesn't really have that. Um, but I know like Satisfactory does. Satisfactory definitely has a, a world to be explored, a world to wander around in and, and learn the ins and outs. And it's missing that multiplayer, you know, to show up and fight a boss. But I have a feeling if I could just teleport halfway across the map to fight a boss rather than spend 10 minutes wandering there and possibly dying on the way because Satisfactory has that habit, at least when I play. Um, yeah, I uh, can confirm that there have been more than a few times where I run through some bushes. Oh, there's a cliff face on the other side. Yes, yes. Intentionally put there by the depths. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, One like, thing um, I do take note there is that uh, it's the inst I think it's the fast traveling that really kills it for WoW. It's just my thought on it. Yeah, see, I, I remember people playing back at the time when they first introduced it, and they, they love the fact because it saves so much time, but I also understand that fast travel takes a lot away from it. Like, I first played with fast yeah. travel in Mist or Riven? Riven. So that's back in the 90s sometime. Um, uh, yeah, fast travel for that was kind of different, though, because you're skipping over soul scenes, which were solved puzzles. Yes, yes, they were, all right? So um, they were of no value anyway, I think. My first experience was uh, Oblivion, I think. Okay, so I didn't play Oblivion. 
but fast travel, fast travel, like for for Riven and Mist, anyway. it was it was like it was literally saving time because there was a significant load time between scene to scene to scene. Oh yeah, and that um, added up too. Yeah, and nowadays it's it's literally the time it takes you to get there, which I know WoW is a pretty big universe, but if you need to budget thirty minutes to to get A to B, um, I don't know. In some ways, I'm like. You know, that's a pack, yeah, fact of life. If you want to go to, you know, if I want to go halfway across town, I need to budget 30 minutes to, to, to drive there. And that's just how life is. Um, when I'm playing Elite Dangerous, same story. I need to, you know, if I need to go meet up with people and it's, you know, 50 jumps away, I need to budget 50 minutes to, to get there. Um, and there's no fast travel in that game. It's just bad luck. You're going to spend 50 jumps and 50 minutes getting there, which is somewhat frustrating i guess it's mildly inconvenient um you know fast travel i guess i don't know i i'd like to say like it takes no more than 10 minutes to get anywhere in any game because 10 minutes is sort of in that that period where it's not so bad you know yeah, I, I can the, lose the time 10 to 10 minutes is what you'd want um, before it becomes a major hurdle yeah, instant instantaneous travel, which is what fast travel is, I don't like. I'm really, really not a fan of it. Um, it's just trying to find a, a good way for a game to implement the fact that you, you know, you need to do a 30 minute travel time in 10 minutes, and therefore do they just magically make you three times faster? Some games I can see that working. Games like Elite Dangerous, I can't. Um, so you know. I don't know. I, I, like I said, I'm not a fan of fast travel overall. Um, in Mist, it definitely worked, but that was loading times yeah. more than anything else. Um, in Oblivion, you missed out on just generally picking up loot and leveling up if you fast traveled between every, which be, which is generally true of Skyrim as well, which basically plays the same. Um, and then he's got a third point, and generally having m more dungeon runs. It, in the same time doesn't make you feel like you're more accomplished in the game it generally just low lowers the value of one run um and it's the cost for being way more mechanical which is i guess true as well um again diablo you know i've had some really really good runs where i get together i get together with like three other really strong players and we can just blitz through run after run after run we'll just keep re-rolling um each you know each instance of just going through and doing them over and over and over but then i've had a run that took three hours because we were like right at our level cap we didn't want to go any lower because one level lower was just so much easier and we just fought through it ever 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 so slowly and it felt like a big accomplishment when you got through to the end so um it always feels like more of an accomplishment when you actually challenged a little bit and not just going through curb stomping everything yeah, which comes to the next point. Um, WoW has level scaling. Um, and Kovrex says the idea is nice to make it more convenient with level scaling. Monsters scale to your level in the zone you are. So you quest any place without having to avoid a too high or too level... Uh, too high level or too low level areas uh, relative to your player level. But uh, he considers this to be a plague of any game when it appears. Instead of zones, their levels and your level mean... Uh, their levels and your level meaning something the progress is clearly visible uh every level and suddenly it all disappears so again yeah that would actually suck really bad it, it really really does like i know through the history of diablo they have some sort of level scaling going on um or at least they definitely have in the modded versions that i have played in the past i don't know if it exists in the current one but you, you can go into, like, if, if the whole game's divided into four sections, the last section's really, really hard. It doesn't matter what level you are, it's really, really hard. The first section is really, really easy. Now, it's not like, you know, you're a level 60 or level 100 or whatever, and when you walk out the town gates, the monsters are still level 1, because they were level 1 when you first started there. They're like level 30 or level 40. You, you you can mostly ignore them, but if you get enough of them, they are going to cause you hassles. Um, maybe minor inconveniences is best, at best. As you move on to area 2 and area 3, they get harder and harder. And then when you get to area 4, they're actually really, really hard. But that gives you some sort of 
consistent scaling where you know level one's always easy level four is always hard if you want to try new gear out you could like try it out in level two or level three you know or area two or area three so you can sort of and get it's a actually feel. predictable yeah it's it's somewhat predictable as predictable as you know games that heavily rely on rng go but um the idea like, of um elder scrolls again where uh it has enemy scaling but it uh it scales in a really wonky way um todd howard being todd howard you wouldn't want it consistent <clears throat> And uh, usually scales out of control to the point where you can't kill anything. Oh, that sounds like awesome fun. You know. Just how Todd Howard intended. No, no. <laughs> um, but like, I like the idea, and and it's always been those that that part of RPGs, um, which Kovacs go. It's the moment of having to run from areas because you're too weak, um, and then you get to come back later. You know, after you've 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 got that other piece of gear, that that one last level up you needed, um, and suddenly you know things have gone from too hard to bearable, and then eventually they become okay, and then easy, and yeah, when the monsters scale, that's just gone. It just comes down to like, what gear can I efficiently roll through monsters the easiest with for my hack and slash game, which gets to a little bit boring, I guess. Um, but yeah, Kovacs goes on and says, how could these be related to Factorio? And he yeah, believes... We haven't on... really talked about Factorio yet. We've all been talking about MOBAs Ma and Yeah, and well, and, and mobs and... Yeah. Um, and he thinks this could be a lot of parallels. So getting your first mount in WoW for at level 40 for 100 gold. So that lets you actually start getting around in a hurry. In, in Factorio terms, it's that first armor. That's, that's that very first modular armor with couple of solar panels a battery and a set of legs and suddenly you get like what's legs 30 percent movement speed uh yeah yeah um and it's it's that really big step up the the base that took you f what felt like five minutes to walk from side to side of now goes back to taking 30 seconds and um it's a big game changer when you get that when you get robots logistic bots bots um, too bots um particularly as soon as you get those going suddenly the base is building itself yeah and 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 that's that's really the big thing in factorio you know getting getting bots a big is a big like power balance change where you can start getting things happening faster because you can have the base as mojo said build itself um, legs is another one, and, and power armor. It's oh yeah, power it, armor, and and even the first set of legs is another big one. Uh, look, I think legs is probably the most most important one because you know, but prior to legs, you're like, I'm only going to build like this big. This is about as big as I want to build because it just takes so long to get from A to B. And then after you get to legs, it's like, oh no, I'm going to build bigger now. I can I can make the base bigger. I can make the base longer. I can make the base taller. Whatever it happens to be, because you still only want to spend like two minutes walking A to B. And that two minutes is now 50% further because you're moving 50% faster. And then after you get Power Armor yeah. Mark 1 and then Power Armor Mark 2 and you start having armor with four sets of legs in there, you're like, oh, yeah, I need to run to that far outpost. Not a problem. I'll just do it. It's yeah, you quick. start running to outpost now. Yeah. Whereas in the past, you'd be like, no, I'm going to you know run the exact opposite direction to catch train because it's faster. Um, it's actually also interesting. You mentions the logistics boss construction bots, which are now permanently or probably locked behind blue. Sky. They're, even, they're uh, further down the tech tree, sort of. Yeah, even though they're technically kind of or always were there in the first place. Yeah, now you kind have, of sorta. Now you have to actually get the research done. Mm, you had to get the research done to unlock them, whereas in the past you could have them unlocked, and you'd have to have the materials to start making them but not necessarily have as many research science points dumped into actually unlock them yeah little change in 17.6 something six something five something one, one of the them. changes one of the changes um so yeah in in factory you get that big level jump and same with wow you get that first mount it's a big like power jump probably is a better way of putting it um and then they're going on to they were thinking about a belt building tool tool similar to the rail, rail building tool it would just connect ends and even find underground connections etc to get to the point of destination it would be super convenient but then solving belt puzzle wouldn't mean much and having the belt factory 
would feel like a much smaller accomplishment. Now, Mojo, I'm going to put you on the stand for the first Uh-oh. half of this. Yep. What do you think, thoughts on a, an automatic belt building tool? So, you know, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is how could I make it draw out the most tangled, tangled and convoluted belt po- I think I'd end up breaking it. Oh, I th- yeah. I think it'd be go like, no, I can't path A to B. Forget it, JD. And then I'd look at it like, oh, no, no, I can path that. All right. Make the computer. No, I can't path it, but the computer can path it for me. Mm. See, I think the biggest limitation for the tool is that, like, it's going to look at what clear tiles are on the map and then try and path from A to B using just clear tiles. Whereas I'm going to look at it and go, well, if I move like that squiggle in that belt over a tile, that lets me put an underground through there and then I can keep going straight through a build rather than going around the build. Um, and it would move... That is true. It would move... Um, I guess back to the train the train tracks. Like, I use Mojo's train blueprints because they're good. They're great. They're awesome. They work. But I'm work very well. f- far from an expert when it comes to trains um, and custom intersections and that sort of stuff. Um, I've had multiple traffic jams using Mojo's blueprints because Mojo's blueprints are designed around a train that is four segments long and or a derivative of four segments long. Something that's divisible by four. Yep. And mine happened to be a three eight. So that's yeah. not designed around Mojo's train blueprints, which was an issue I knew going in. I'm like, no, it should be fine. Turns out it's not really fine. Not without some um, fixing some intersections as I go. Um, but I think the same thing would happen with belts. You'd have all these great belt masterpiece spaghetti put together. And then somebody who's actually good at belts would actually look at it and like, you know, this belt going from you know the center of the map to the right to the you know to left you know to, to the right down to left all the way around this build and up to there doesn't make any sense you could have just run it straight up and just move some stuff around but because people are not good at belts and they're just relying on some magic tool then you know it you would end up with crap crap yeah i'm gonna say you're gonna end up with crap bases um because people haven't learnt how to do belts and how to do belts well. Um, yeah. Just, you, you end up with endless posts on the forums and the reddits. How do I do this? Why doesn't this work? And it's just some knotted mess of belt where they clicked A and B and then not really knowing how any of it interacts. Yeah. Same thing happens when you use the, the rail blueprint and then rather than going in a straight line, your mouse moves up or down by a tile and you get that lovely squiggle that oh, everybody yes. hates. Yeah. Can you think about that with belts? That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I, I hope Kovrex can learn from some of the pitfalls of World of Warcraft. I think the biggest issue with Factorio is it's really in a genre of its own. Um, it's really, I wouldn't say the first, but probably the first majorly popular and successful fact- factory building game. Um, really focused it into a single thing and brought like gave you everything you want in a supply yeah. chain uh, sort of production game. Yeah, and I, I've seen a lot of others that are like similar to it, um, but nothing that's that's really as focused as Factoria. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing because a lot of times when you're making another RPG or a, a another tower defense or another you know whatever it happens to be you can steal the good ideas from the other games whereas factorio is the game um there i haven't seen a lot of a lot of other games that are in the same genre that that have anything worth stealing nine times out of ten they've stolen the good ideas from factorio um yeah there's a surprising number of games that have popped up with factory elements in them now yeah it's it's interesting to be at the start of a new genre and we're going to see where it goes but like factorio is factorio is um the wolfenstein 3d or the um june 2000 it is it is the first game of the new genre it is you know it's the starting brick um which means they're the one creating the ideas rather than stealing the ideas from somebody else so that's probably why it's got such a 
such a following, actually. It's yeah. something new. It's something different. Um, anyway, I think that's it for Friday Facts 314 and a half. Um, maybe next week they'll post all the Friday Facts together rather than, you know, into separate in, in halves. Multiple yep. segments when they feel like it. Yeah. Um, you'll notice that this doesn't have the um, the pretty buttons for Reddit and forums at the bottom. So I'm getting guessing Covrex doesn't have that bit of code. That's a... That's a um, Probably. Yeah, cloning thing. So, no, uh, cloning? Yeah, cloning. Uh, cloning, yes. Anyway. That's it from us. Um, thank you guys for tuning in for a midweek Friday, not Friday facts, not Friday facts, not Tuesday. Friday facts. Um, yeah, it's still Tuesday. It's Tuesday facts. Not Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, Tuesday facts. Anyway, that's it from us. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on Friday. Yep. Yeah, bye. Bye bye.